So we're going to talk about one more thing in this chapter, and that is the concept of orthogonal regressors. Orthogonal re regressors are great because they make it really easy to interpret the effect each regressor has on a response. So in general, regressors are said to be orthogonal if their covariance is zero, and the intercept is orthogonal to a regressor if the sum of the elements of the regressor are equal to zero. And if a regressor is orthogonal to another regressor, its addition or deletion from the fitted model will not change the estimated regression coefficients for any other regressor that's in the model. And a similar property holds for the intercept. So orthogonality only occurs when x is chosen by an experimenter. It never really happens for observational data. But if you're designing an experiment, then you can actually design the experiment to have orthogonal regressors. And that's a really good property to have. So let's just do a very simple example. Uh, it's related to some data, some odor data. So we have, we're looking at the relationship between column temperature, gas to liquid ratio, and packing height, and reducing the unpleasant odor of a chemical product that was sold in household use. So we have this chemical that's a pretty, or chemical product that's pretty smelly, and we're trying to figure out what we can do to reduce how pot or how pungent the chemical product is. So our predictor va values all have, they've all been rescaled to negative one, zero, or one. This is an example of a central composite design. We won't talk any more about that this semester, but it's a special kind of experimental design that people use. And so what I want you to notice when we fit the regression model is that when we remove one of the regressors, all the other regressors are actually, all the estimated regression coefficients will stay the same. The test statistics and residual standard errors are going to change slightly but the estimated regression coefficients are identical to what they are regardless of whether the regressor is in the model. So uh, first of all, let's just look at our data. So it's the odor data in the fairway package. So we load it. We look at the first six rows by using the head function. And you can see that we have negative one, zero, positive one, etc. So those are the values of all of our variables. And then we have the measurements related to the odor. We extract the X matrix from the X matrix that we're going to use to fit the models using the model.matrix function. So model.matrix, if you recall, basically what it does is it actually extracts the X matrix from a model that you describe. And so we're going to have a model that has temp, gas, and pack as regressors. We're going to use the odor data set. And we're going to extract the resulting X matrix that you would use for that particular model. And if we look at the covariance between all of the regressors, uh, we see that the covariance between the regressors is zero, and then also the covariance between X and the regressors is zero. So there's no covariance between any of the regressors or the intercepts. And if we fit a model that has all three regressors in the model, we get estimates of 15.2, negative 12.1, negative 17, and negative 21.4. And if we refit this model without the pack, sorry, without the temp variable, so we're going to remove this variable right here, you can see that our estimated regression coefficients are exactly what they were before, subject to rounding errors. So this was negative 21.4. This is negative 21.37. That just has to do with how many decimal places are, are shown. In fact, these estimates are identical. Though if you look at the estimated standard error and the test statistics, you can see that that's, those actually change uh, just a little bit. It's hard to tell on these because of the rounding. But if you look at the estimated test statistic here, or the test statistic, you can see that they have the same number of decimal places and that they differ ever so slightly between the two different models.